me, and a lot of people with the car not running, you open up the hood, and they say, oh, fuel he has, 327 car. Yeah. Nicely done. Uh-huh. Yep. Well, you're partially right. Good enough. <laughs> so, Good enough. Un- well, it's just like yeah, you, until it opens its mouth. Exactly. Right. It's just sitting there. It's like, yeah, okay, that's pretty. Yeah, and then the next thing you know. Because I also like it because people with practice ears, you know what I mean? Car oh, yeah. rolls in, it's like, stock my you know what. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? <laughs> I love that. Talk yeah. about practice ears, Tori. A couple of weeks ago, I had my Pontiac here. and uh, I love that car. And Joe looks over me and says, hey. The car's running better. Is it running different? And I'm like, yeah, it is. Because uh, I knew it sounded a little different. I played with a couple things. And he picked it right up just by hearing the car idle. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> you got to love that. Yeah, I love that. that. And the color of the hood. I can't wait to see the rest of the car painting to match the hood. That is a spectacular color. It is. It certainly it. is. I know. It's, it's a Pontiac color, too. That's why. Except I probably wouldn't recognize Ray if I saw him driving down the street with that car all one color. Nobody would, yeah. Well, that's going to be even <laughs> more, make it more stealth because no one will ever expect that. So It's a time period correct it. color which hasn't lost its, its luster over the years. It's still a cool color today. Right, exactly. you yeah. got to love it. I mean, a lot of people can just paint the car, you know, red or whatever. But that gold, oh, those, that is, ooh, those I, I love colors, that color. Those type of colors are, are coming back. And I'm going to tell you something. I found one at up at Syracuse Nationals. I saw a 69 Camaro, and I asked the guy, what color is that? And it's called his was called Butterscorch Pearl. I think it was a uh, a foos color. Might have either been a, a foos cool. color or a um, who's the other guy making custom colors? But I said, oh, that is really cool, Butterscorch. But I never I never saw that color before. It's a custom color. Well, not, you know, my car is just a seventy seventy six Trans Am and, and Grand Prix anniversary color, which is uh, very cool. Fine by me. Yeah. So, I, if you look around and you they, they, they come up with. Cool colors all over the years. Like uh, oh, yeah. my my car used to be seventy six Firethorn Metallic. Firethorn Metallic. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, I know. That's a sharp color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, people say, "Oh, what, what colors?" You call? Uh, pff, red. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier. Yeah. Oh, you didn't say it was that color, red. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no, no, that, that, that kind of sets you off. You know, from uh, you know, there, there's a lot of black cars. There's a lot of white cars. And red. And, and red. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. key thing with the with the, a dark color car, though, the car needs to be straight. The bodywork needs to be on point. Yep. Absolutely. Because no matter how nice the paint job is, if that <laughs> bodywork isn't laser straight, you playing the Hawaii Five O song. Oh <laughs> yeah, be more waves in there than Rockaway. So. There you exactly. go. That's yeah. it. <laughs> All yeah. right, Tori. Well, we're going to wave on out for our next break. And, it was great uh, talking to you guys. Thanks. We'll talk to you again soon. Yeah. Sounds good. Take care, Ray. So uh, long, take Joe. Care, Have man. a great weekend. You too. Enjoy All the right. rest All of right. it. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye now. All right. That was our good friend Tori, our Chevelle Camaro expert. we got to take a ride out to his place, Joe, because I actually have to give him back the core and that steering box and pay him for the one that I... Uh, that he's so graciously... Uh, yeah, I didn't see us. no bow on that one when he handed it to no, you, so no, I no, figured you got, he was looking for money, yeah. I got the money sitting on my dining room table. I told my wife, yeah, that money, I said, uh, she was what money? I'm like, that's exactly right, what <laughs> money? I said, it's not, <laughs> that's not house money, that's for Tory. Ah, so, whoops, well, yeah. that's right. Well, that, that, you know, I, I, that's what Post-it notes are for, you know. Exactly. Steering box money, garage rent money, you know, that right. kind of pizza money. Right. Well, that, that, this, this way, no, there, there's, no, uh, there's no ambiguity. It's like, uh, can I have some of No. And as long as it, yeah, you don't see any uh, feathered creatures flying around that want to put their claws out and grab it, right? Uh, that's a good thing. So with that in note, let's see what our next out song is going to be on Motormouth Radio. Ray Guarino, Joe D. We will be back Drum in a roll, few please. after we sharpen our talons. Well, now everybody's heard about the bird. On August 16th at 2 p.m., we'll listen to some Elvis music then. Since August 16, 1977, Elvis has been king of rock and roll heaven. Tune in to the 40th anniversary tribute show. There is more to Elvis than you know. With poems from the Book of Elvis, his life in rhyme, the music is his, the poetry is mine. I'm your host, Victoria Crosby. Please be my guest for a show that is different from all the rest.
WHPC is underwritten in part by the Elvis Tribute Artist Spectacular, starring Sean Clush, Cody Ray Slaughter, and the Sweet Inspirations. Coming to the NYCB Theater at Westbury on Friday, August 25th at 8 p.m. For ticket information, you may visit venue.thetheater at westbury.com. Every sound, every note, including the bass, on this track is played by a monkey. American Hit Radio, Wednesdays and Fridays at 5 p.m. on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. All right. Birds the word. We shot them all down. The birds are now dead. We shot them. They're all in the, in the ground over there. We're going to go and pluck the feathers and get the meat, and we're going to do something later on. We'll have uh, wings. I don't know. Uh, I was going to say some nice pillows, you know. Okay. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. Back. Um, yes, Joe. Please. No, no, I was going to say something. I, Tell me. Last week, we forgot to mention that uh, one of our, uh, our listeners, Bob from Rockville Center, came. They didn't yes. come and join us. He came and uh, he visited Rob Lennon, I think yeah, it was. Yeah, he, he won. Uh, he uh, Rob raffled an hour off on a show, which I think we're going to steal that idea next year. And right. God knows what we'll find out on our shop bench. I don't know. But Second we'll, prize is a half hour on our show. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> right. Or, uh, no, actually, I said that the second prize is two hours on our show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, oh, no, no. You got to do the show for us. Uh, <laughs> How's yeah. that? There's, <laughs> yeah, you want to see? Yeah, you do it for us. That, that'll be... Uh, well, first, that would require brainwashing and uh, yeah. or brain bleaching. Or, and maybe some uh, medication. Oh, serious medication. But uh, we wanted to thank him for uh, yeah. make, make, acknowledging us as well in, while he was here. He did. And that yes. was very nice. I've already, um, I've already used part of that acknowledgement uh, on some of my work that I do. And, uh, and Bob, yes, thank you very much. And it was uh, much appreciated. I, it's nice to know somebody actually thinks uh, positively of us. You know what I mean? It's, it is. It is. Because it's kind of, uh, we don't hear that all the time, you know? Yeah, usually it's like you do what? Yeah. <laughs> You're on what? You <laughs> So it's uh it's actually nice to know that <coughs> at least there's one person listening. Exactly. And I think maybe my wife and my son, yeah. maybe, maybe yeah. too, but yeah. uh, you never can tell. Um so so, so, so let me uh that well that, Let's that was, continue with the uh the yeah. uh Something I saw there. on another show that they do a lot of rest- high-end restorations on, mm-hmm. they built a car for a guy, and they modified it. They put on a set of dual-quad, dual-quad Elbrock Thunder Series carburetors like I have on my car. Mm-hmm. Nice now, carburetors. One is a primary, and one is a secondary. Mm-hmm. The primary goes in the rear. The mm-hmm. secondary goes in the front, right. like a Chrysler that had it reversed. Mm-hmm. Well, they had two. The, it was, uh, you, know, you can't tell which is which by looking at it, but what I did see was two electric chokes. I'm like, yeah. they had two primary carburetors on this car. Right. I said, okay, they were just mocking it up. I said, maybe by the time, I said, I bet you by the time this edit gets to the end of the show and they give the guy the car and everything will be fixed. No, they fired that thing up and gave him a car with two primary cars with two electric chokes that were both wired. Really? This was a high level show here. How do you, how does that get past you? Two, two chokes on, come on. Anyway, that was, that was really. That's a bad. lot of choking. Sure is. Yeah. The last one I just saw this morning on one of the truck shows and the host was, had a torque wrench in his hand, and he was preloading a. He was doing a rear end bearing. He was preloading it. And he says he said he was using a dial torque wrench. Right. It was clearly a beam style torque wrench. Yeah. And dial. he's saying, yeah, as you use this dial torque wrench, and you and I'm like, did you look down at your hands? Maybe, maybe there was soap on it or something. <laughs> uh, maybe, uh, maybe. Yeah, but dial. well, some people. Well, maybe he was thinking about a radio dial. I oh God, I just dated myself. <laughs> right. For those of you that uh, don't. Don't know, radios used to have dials that the point they used to travel across as opposed to uh, as opposed to the digital readouts that uh, we have today. Right. Uh, but in the meantime, so maybe he was thinking that was a dial. Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's a beam. It's a lever. Anyway, th- those are the three I found this week. If anybody else has any more, give us a call, 516-572-7440, and share them with us because we like to nitpick stuff. Because that's the thing. You can't slide car stuff like that by car guys and i don't care if it's a cooking show a sewing show when people watch it who do that i've for never for a hobby i've never seen them use a dial torque wrench on a cooking show i've never seen them use it now beam style either but uh you know if they did i hope they wiped it off first before they started stirring it i would hope yes but yeah but you're right um it's showbiz right yeah i think it's poor and quality. maybe you know, somebody it's... wrote the script and you know hopefully with any luck uh, once the, uh, the the camera stops rolling, they're like, "Hey, what did you make me say this for?" You know, it's it's. 
um, sometimes the people who actually do the showbiz and the things, they might not even drive. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I could see the editor. I could see it getting past maybe the film crew. Right. But the people working on the cars, these guys are pretty good builders. Right. You think, and, and a lot of times you see something that's wrong, and then on the next cut, it's fixed. They don't mention it. They don't bring it to attention. They just fix yeah. Sometimes it. yeah, because it's, you know, why, why reshoot it when you could just do it right? And hopefully somebody will say, ah. ah. I mean, so you do this is pretty much the same thing I I do when I watch some of those shows, uh, or I watch the YouTube videos, and I'm yelling oh, at yeah. the uh, at, at the screen. It's like it's a bad ground. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> something like that. But um, some of this stuff gets. Uh, yeah, they 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 sometimes are catering to a different uh, a demographic, a different demographic I where they're like, they "Ooh, should. carburetors, two of them, how pretty!" You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But uh, yeah, but they they should strive for more accuracy. But then again, you know, <clears throat> one thing I've noticed uh, is that sometimes technical accuracy can be boring. Mm-hmm. It can be aggravating. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, you right have to right make it wrong is wrong. I mean, yeah, that's on. true too. I mean, two primary carburetors just yeah. kind of screwed up. You know, I mean, and and they were at the final reveal. It's kind of tipping like not all shows have final reveals. At the final reveal, they were giving the owner this car. Right. Presumably, he's going to take this car and drive it. This, like I said, in the mock-up stage, things are going to load up like a pig. In the mock-up stage, things can happen. You say, okay, well, you know, yeah, all right, they they screwed up and then they they change it later on. But right. This was in the final. Edit now. Maybe they did catch it before the car went out the door. I don't know. I don't well, know exactly. You know, what happened try, trying to play devil's advocate, maybe uh, maybe the whoever supplied them with the carburetor supplied them two primaries, and the other one didn't show up yet. Because remember, all that stuff gets built in eight hours. Well, I know. Well, they I'll have an accelerated this. time machine thing over there that they the, do. The, the the gentleman Bill Dugan, the guy that had built the engine for my Pontiac, I gave him, of course, the carburetors and everything. He put them on wrong. He put the the primary carburetor in the front. And the, and the other carburetor in the back. Then again, he's built a couple of Mopars with dual quads. So Chrysler does use the primary in the front. Okay. So, you know, because uh, I looked at it, I said, that's wrong. It's kind of like brake shoes. Kind of, yeah, primary and secondary brake shoes. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, because, you know, some, sometimes, too, it's just a matter of knowledge of, of, of a particular type of system because yeah. common sense may get you into trouble in the car business. It can. And, uh, that you know, that, that carries over to... Things like brake shoes, carburetors, and right. I'm sure we, I could think of a few other things if I if I could uh, scratch my head a little yes. longer. But I want to take a trip down retro lane with you here, Joe. Retro lane. I just got this out of a magazine this morning, and I, I will just tell you it was out of the AARP magazine. All right. Uh. It's called Tell the Tape. Get a load of this. Is get out a pencil to respool all that wayward audio tape. Cassettes are cool again. Really? Now, you know, I've been listening to my vinyl. I never really stopped, and vinyl has, a, has had a resurgence. Sure. And they mention it here. They say, well, why is it cool? Well, in this digital age, some music fans still want a physical product, like me. Yeah. I have my, I, there's something visceral about taking the album out of the sleeve. Dropping it down, yeah. Cleaning clean, it with, yep. the, with the disc cleaner. Right. Dropping the needle on it and hearing the lead-in track, the lyric groove. You know, it's, it's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, Definitely. I, I would agree with that. Yeah, an album, you know, the, the artwork that they could fit on oh, sure. on there and all that kind Oops. of stuff. So, it's amazing. But they do say that, you know, LP, new LPs can cost $20 or more, which I have bought a few of the new ones that are expensive. Like right, that. right. Um, and they say cassettes can be had for about 8 bucks a piece. Yeah, it's about, yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, I haven't tried the I mean, I still have at least two vehicles with cassettes in the console. I listened to a cassette in my Fiat earlier this week. Because right. I have a CD cassette, and I, and I had a I had a Zappa, C, a Zappa cassette in there, so I was listening to yeah. uh, Dynamo Hum, in fact. And, and and you know what? You know, cassettes are not the most uh, auditory accurate uh, medium. Better than yeah. an eight track. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and and the thing is, is that most cars that a lot of cars that would have cassettes, you know, i.e. your Fiat. Yeah. All right, you got the top down. You got the muffler, the muffler burbling. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah, you got a soundtrack in the background, it's but you, it's not like you got your, your Cost Pro Four Double A's over your head there. Nice. You know? Yeah. See, I I still got them someplace. So you know. Do I. Yeah. I have them in my closet. In fact, I used to wear them here on the show many years ago. But they they're actually sound deadening. They they actually they oh, yeah. black out everything else, so you couldn't hear anything else. So I, I have so many dents in my skull. From sitting in my room listening to uh, listening to music at ungodly levels, yes. And one yes. family member they go, Joseph, Joseph, and finally they throw something at you, right? Right. You know, <laughs> I mean, it. what are you going to do? Yeah. But-